morning from the garden. This morning I'm just going to do a fun update of all of the beautiful things that are blooming in the garden right now. The lilies are, are just becoming fantastic and uh, let's go check it out. Oh my. Well, it looks like I should probably do this video a little later when these flowers have completely opened up. Um, but I think you can get the idea of how gorgeous this yellow daylily is and um, how happy it is in its new home over here. Um, it took two years for it to really bounce back and, and be as happy as it is, but it's got these gorgeous, probably six inch across blooms, and it is so, so happy. I just love it. It's just a pop of color from across the garden that you can see it. And this is the honey nut squash. And the amount of fruit on this plant is crazy. Now, I do have some of them, oops, sorry. I do have some of them that are not doing well. Like this one didn't get pollinated. Ooh. They usually pop right off there so but this one didn't get pollinated and I have picked a few of them off because I finally recently just got some male flowers down here to um, pollinate some of this fruit so it does look like I have a few of these fruits that are going to um, start producing like this one for sure look at how big he's gotten compared to even just the smaller one that Huh, it's interesting. But this vine it grows about a foot over the path every day. So I have to put it back up on the trellis and then it grows the foot over the path. So what an amazing plant that's in a pot. It's so neat. We have a spotting of the garden critter over here where I still haven't planted anything. We had a heat wave last week that it was um, heat indexes of like 115. So uh, yeah, I didn't do a whole lot of gardening things like like planting things like that. So we are back to normal Minnesota temperatures in the 80s. Um, with Right now it's probably 65. I didn't look, but um, 65 degrees, something like that. This is the Kajari melon that is really finally starting to take off. Hopefully, I'll get one Kajari melon. That's all I'm hoping for. If I get more than that, that's great. The, um, the mammoth sunflowers are well over the six-foot fence, so they're about eight feet tall now, and they still haven't um, started flowering yet, so I'm kind of hoping that they still get a little bigger. Over here is where the magic is really happening. Um, we've got the echinaceas, the two different color echinaceas blooming. Um, very probably traditional colors, but um, just just loving them. This one over here um, grew from seed. Um, I've got this daylily that is um, on the list of one of my favorites. Um, this plant is still sad, and um, I'm hoping to be able to nurse it back to back to full happy health this year and, and maybe next year we can get a nice full plant out of it. Um, over here we have some of my lilies that just I they're so beautiful. Now these over here are my tree lilies and they are normally approximately six feet tall. I don't know what happened to them this year. They're only a about half the height that they normally are. They're about three feet tall. I have some of these lilies at my mother's house and um, hers are normal height. So I don't know if that cold spring just kind of stunted their growth and they're just doing the best they can. Hopefully next year they recover and they, they get their height back. But they're still beautiful and they are so fragrant that while they're blooming it's almost overwhelming back here and and I'm gonna say that my husband's willing to say that they are overwhelming um, in their smell they you can smell them in the front yard they're just they're a beautiful very strong fragrance so 
this is the other lily from the uh, surprise lilies that I didn't know what what they were. The other one was a um, eyeliner lily that one of my friends on YouTube told me the proper name for it, which is so nice to to hear. And um, I believe he said that it they were prolific and and um, growing growing well at his house. So hopefully I can get the same. Um, this one is just kind of a mottled pink and there's like a double inside but I still can't decide whether that is just an imperfection in that flower or if that's how this plant is so because this one doesn't really have it but this one does now this one's just opening and it looks like it might minorly have some so it's a it's a um pretty flower that's you know, unique from, from my other pink lilies. So I don't know if this will focus. Sometimes it has a hard time. There it goes. Um, yeah, so, so that's really, that's a really beautiful flower. Over here are the giant, um, tree lilies and, and their beautiful blooms. I'm going to try to step in the garden here, um, to kind of Oh my god. Are you serious? So I love frogs. I love them. So so ever since I was a little kid, I have loved frogs. Um just just think that they're amazing. I they're my favorite thing to find in the garden. So to find a frog in this giant and beautiful lily is so wonderful. Oh my goodness. As I was reaching my hand in to show how large this is, I came across the little tree frog and got totally distracted by him because I just think he's so precious. Um, but just to show that these flowers are, you know, about six inches across them, I, I don't want to disturb him out of there. He's totally fine. There was a little bit of a pun there. Oh, God. Anyways, here's a here's a big flower back here that I can play around with, um, but that you can see, um, yeah, these these flowers are huge. They start out like a really deep, dark um, kind of mauve, and then as they age, they turn into this light pink with a yellow center. Um, that's why I really believe that. These lilies here are a cross between those light pink lilies and these lilies because, I mean, you can see the color is very similar. The behavior is somewhat similar. They don't, these don't have a fragrance like the tree lilies do, but they're just as beautiful, so. I also have some of my dahlias that are growing in here, finally. Oh, isn't that fun? The bumblebee. Um, finally starting to bloom. This one's the peachy pink. Um, and then this really tall one is, I, would you, lavender, kind of a, yeah, purpley, purpley pink. That one is the, the really tall wacky one that I'm not sure why it got so tall. So I was going to try to show some of these daylilies over here, but they aren't quite open yet this morning. So this one, these two are, are very similar. Um, this, this one back here, along with this one, it looks like are the only two that are going to open on this plant. Um, as we come around these tall, tall, uh, zinnias, this daylily is, is just fantastic. It's so beautiful. Um, I, I just love how pretty it is. And it looks like these are fully open already this morning. I think that they actually weren't just a few minutes ago. And I walked away for a few minutes and came back and, and now they are. So, um, yeah, I love these, these daylilies. And I think also, excuse me, I was blowing out a mosquito. Um, I think these I also bought at the nursery um, unlabeled, like they were the ones that were unlabeled and I, I didn't know for sure what they were, but I've been, 
that was probably 10 years ago. I've divided the one in the back a few times and and um, looks like this one could probably use some division too. So yeah, it's just so beautiful. I love daylily time or lily time when all my lilies start blooming. Um, again, the zinnias are doing really well here. I've uh, picked a few of them for flower arrangements, so we're getting some more tall blooms. Um, and there's another echinacea that I have growing over here with a giant bumblebee coming into it. Um, some more zinnias. And then this other um, daylily is like a double peach colored daylily. It's just beautiful. Now I did notice that I was losing a few of the, the blooms are like drying, oh, see, drying and falling off. So I don't know if the heat got to it or what, but hopefully it'll recover. I wish it would do a little better over here. That one is a Stella Dior Daylily that is finished for now. And I don't know, maybe they need to be divided this year. Um, when it cools down, I'll probably divide them a little bit. Just a bit of documentation for me here. Um, I did harvest my first cucumber day before yesterday. So um, they are finally taking off and it does look like they're getting um, plenty of fruit growing on them all the way up here. I haven't seen any fruit on any of the lemon cucumber plant. I think that's uh, this guy. This, yeah, this guy here. He's got a rounded top on him. The leaves of that. Like, this one's more square and it's a lot rougher. So, um, following this plant up, I don't see, I don't see any fruit yet. But, at least I am getting some of the straight eights and the market mores. So, they're just as yummy. Actually, I have never tried one of the lemon ones, so it's hard to say. And the cucamelon still hasn't started anything, but that might not be until more into August that we'll, we'll get some cucamelons. The last update that I have is the new butterfly house is up. It is in service. I have caterpillars, eggs, and chrysalises. Um, so we can kind of do a quick little tour of this. We've got the little latches um, to hold the doors shut. And here we go. This is my new caterpillar butterfly house. So I primarily grow monarchs um, in here, but quite frankly, if I find caterpillars of any butterfly, they can come in here and then I just find food for them. Um, I do grow milkweed all over in the garden and um, that's how I get my little babies all over. Oh, that's a dangerous baby. Okay, so we have a baby. These predators try to get in here and we have to try to prevent that. So I'm going to kill this little guy. He can't be in there. There we go. Um, there was a centipede in there. Um, but just to show some of the tiny babies, let's see if we can find one of them. So this is probably a second instar, so this is actually bigger than the um, than they are when they are first hatched. But um, that's a baby. So this, I, I try to keep them separate. I do the babies over here in the smaller... Um, I've got a pantyhose over some water so that they don't drown because they're so little that if they walk down there they'll drown. Um, this is an egg of a monarch so that's just waiting to hatch. The egg will turn um, black right before the caterpillar hatches out. Um, I grow primarily swamp milkweed which is this um, like long pointy milkweed. Um, but this is common milkweed that I purchased at the garden center and um, I'm going to try to grow some of this too. Just like more milkweed is better. Um, but I purchased it and it had caterpillars on it so it came just somewhat straight into the, um, yeah, straight into the butterfly house. I don't see the babies right now. They were tiny so sometimes they are hard to find. Like. 
I kind of give up once they get in here. I just, I know they're in here and, and I don't worry too much about finding them, you know, once they get bigger. So this guy is probably a third or fourth in star. So he's getting bigger. Um, there's, a, there's a little guy peeking in underneath this leaf here. He's busy eating. Um, he interestingly is damaged and I didn't know if I should put him in here or not. If he, you know, is, if he has any kind of like contagious, I wish it would focus on him. Um, I don't think it is. I don't know if he has any kind of like contagious thing. I'm kind of hoping that that is, uh, like predator damage and that sometimes once they shed their skin with predator damage, then, um, they can, they can recover from that. So, um, I left him there. Oh my, this is my hand from the, um, daylilies. <laughs> they do stain. <laughs> I just looked down and it looks like I murdered someone. Um, this one is a caterpillar that is probably going to go make his chrysalis, I would say, tomorrow. Um, yikes. So it's a, it's very interesting if you're interested into this at all. Um, he came up here and he chews this end of the stem, and that is to stop the flow of the milk into the leaf of the milkweed um, so that he doesn't, like, it's not so wet when he's chewing on the leaf. Um, so I found him in the garden yesterday, gave him his own, um, gave him his own plant. Of course, they don't, they don't worry too much if they come across a tiny little caterpillar, they just keep eating. And, um, so I try to keep them separate from the little ones. So he's over there and yeah, he'll make a chrysalis today or tomorrow. I am going to try to catch that and put it, um, I'll put it on my channel, the, the, um, wonderfulness of them morphing into their chrysalis and, um, it's called encasing when they come out. So, um, I think it's encasing. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. And then there's these little babies over here. These are more babies that I found yesterday. Um, and they actually love the flowers. So sometimes it's, it's hard to find the babies because they'll be in the flowers eating. So, um, yeah, they're eating right now. It's kind of chilly out this morning and, um, they won't, they aren't very active. They are very, they're very cold blooded. So if it's, if it's cool out, the caterpillars are slow, sluggish, not a whole lot. They don't grow as quickly. Um, it's supposed to be hot this weekend, which is great. Um, basically they want an oven to grow in. If it's hot, they will eat like crazy and grow like crazy and um, go up and make their chrysalises. So, um, again, so just to be gross, that's his poop. That's that one caterpillar's poop. So when I get, you know, 50 or 60 caterpillars in here every day, I need to come in and clear out the poop, um, which is, uh, wow. So in the background, I think that that is the robins yelling at a hawk in the tree right above me. There's been a hawk hanging out, which might be why I haven't seen the bunny. I'm okay with it. These two are the first chrysalises that I've had. Um, so that's, that's just amazing that the very first day that I put them in, I had two cata large caterpillars that I brought into the, I brought into the, um, butterfly house and they pretty much within 24 hours went up and made their chrysalises. That's not turning out because of the light behind it. Um, so there they are. I'm going to shut this door because we're getting a lot of bugs in here and that's okay. I think that was a moth. But, so that's the tour of the butterfly house. Um, it's got beautiful doors and it just closes up and so wonderful. Thank you to my wonderful husband for helping me rebuild my butterfly house. I just wanted to come back this afternoon just to show um, when these are open and they're actually not in that much sun right now. It's very dappled sun and they're just so beautiful. They're just so stunning um, with their shocking yellow and they're, they're huge. Like, the flowers are giant. So, anyways, just a beautiful flower.
So that's the end of the tour um, for the day. It's it's just some beautiful blooms and um, things are about to explode with the tomatoes. Um, I'm still waiting for a ripe ground cherry to try it. I'm so excited to try a ground cherry. Um, but yeah, it's just a beautiful day here in Minnesota and um, thank you for watching and I hope everybody enjoys their day.